All right, so today we're taking a look at the EG4 18KPV all-in-one hybrid inverter that we're being told is going to be released in May 2023, and today is April 27th, 2023, so just a couple weeks. And it looks like they took some notes from the uh, Solark 15K here, and I can see why EG4 uh, tried to make a competitive inverter to this thing because I love this Solark 15K. It so this EG4 18KPV all-in-one inverter can it can handle an impressive 21,000 watts of solar panels into it, guys. That's huge. Uh, the Solark 15K here only allows 19,500, so it's got it beat at least on that end. And this EG4 18KPV has three MPPT charge controllers that can handle a maximum of 600 volts at 20 amps. That is, I would say it's comparable to Solar because this 15K allows 500 volts, but it allows 26 amps, so a little bit more amps than what the EG4 uh, 18KPV offers. And, but another difference too in this is the Solar 15K has two, allows two solar strings to be connected per MPPT charge controller on it. Now the EG4 18KPV only allows two strings to go in the first MPP charge controller, but then the other two only allows one string. So is that a big deal? I mean, I don't think so. On my 15K here, I only use one string plugged into each one to get my 19,200 watts. So I don't know, not a big deal. I'd say they're pretty comparable, at least in that aspect. So while the EG4 KPV allows 21,000 watts of solar panels to be connected to it, it can only utilize 18,000 watts of that. So I just wanna make sure I'm clear on that point. And this is a preview. Obviously, I can't do an actual review because I don't have the actual 18K PV here with me. It's not released yet. Um, it's not battle tested yet, so we'll have to see on that. And like the Solark 15K, the EG4 18K PV can be used on grid and off grid, hence that's why they call it a hybrid, or used as a combination of both like I do. It's a split phase inverter, so it allows 120 or 240 volts. So the EG4 inverter can send 12,000 watts to your loads when operating from the battery bank only, like an off-grid mode, 12,000 watts. And it says it can do up to 8,000 watts in one leg, which means if you did 8,000 on one leg, you can only do 4,000 on the other leg, as I understand it. Now, I did uh, reach out to EG4 just to kind of get some more information. They're not answering my email and you really can't give them a call, which is one thing I'm, I'm not a fan of with EG4. Solark, I can get on the phone, and I actually did. I called them to ask them about this new inverter to see from EG4 to see if they were uh, keeping an eye on it, and they are, and I asked them why they thought theirs was better, and they gave me a few things that they thought, and I'll, I'll give that here in the, uh, towards the end of the video. And this EG4 inverter, just like the Solark 15K, it has a 200 amp pass-through switch, which means you can connect it between, well, let me rephrase. I'm assuming you can connect it just like the Solark 15K, which means from your meter, it can go directly from your meter at the street, your electrical meter, into your EG4 KPV inverter, just like you can the Solark, and then from there, it loops out over to your main panel in your house. Now, I looked at the manual on the EG4 18 KPV, and it doesn't show that actual design in their manual, but it's exactly like the Solark, so I'm assuming that is correct. That's one thing I emailed them and I haven't heard back from EG4 on it, but from what I can see, it's exactly like the Solark 15K. It has the big 200 amp pass through, so there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to, in my opinion, but double check that. So what that means is no critical loads panel. You can literally run your whole 200 amp panel right off it, but that means you do have to be aware of how, much, how many loads you're using. Are you using more than that 12,000 max? Because if you are, it's gonna shut down and have to reboot because you overloaded it. So you do have to manage your loads if you're not doing a critical loads panel. So but personally, I like that better. I want to be able to run anything I want and just, you know, maybe I don't run my well pump at the same time I'm running my air conditioner. At the same time, I'm running my whole water pressure system pump, which I need because I am technically, I've got an off-grid water system. So I just have to be careful about that to not overload it. It can sell to the grid. It can do time of use, which means you can program it if you're in a, crazy energy area like California where they charge you more during the peak hours, you can set the EG4 18K PV to tell it use batteries during that high priced watt time. And then when that time is up, you can send it right back and tell it to charge your batteries. So just like the Solark 15K here, 
it's got so many features like that that I can't even get into in this video. It would take forever. But again, these two inverters, they do that same thing. And it, it, those are awesome features, guys, let me tell you. Now, pricing at the moment that I'm seeing for the EG4 18K PV is right at $5,600. That's pretty good because the solar arc from right, what I see right now is at $8,250. So you're saving right around $25, $2,600 by going with the EG4 18K PV. So what I think is solar arc's probably gonna have to come down on their pricing as soon as this thing's released, but we'll see on that. Now I'll have links to both these inverters, the Solarc 15K and the EG4 18K PV in the description of this video. And shoot me an email if you end up purchasing either of those from one of my links, because for helping this channel out, I'm going to send you a PDF that I have of my, basically the wiring of my whole system, how I put it together, and also a PDF of every single part I use down to literally the lock rings on the conduit here. So. Um, you can email me. I'll put my email address up on the screen and let me know you did that and I'll send that over to you as a thank you. Oh, and this PDF will probably help you a lot in the approval process if you do live in an area where you need to get a permit to put this in. This will help you kind of design that where you can, you know, make your own tweaks to it or redraw it in the way you're going to do it and then send that to whatever municipality you're trying to get the permit from. And it took me a while to source all these parts, guys, for this. So uh, hopefully that'll help you out because I wish somebody would have provided something like that to me when I was doing this process. Oh, and even though I use the uh, the Solark 15K rather than the EG4 inverter, they look literally almost identical. So every part and piece should be the same. So whether you're gonna go with the Solark or the EG4 inverter, these PDFs should still apply to you. So both the EG4 18K PV inverter and the Solark 15K both have a generator input where you can run a generator right into it and then charge your batteries or run your house, use the passive to run your house. So that's a very good feature along, that comes along with both of these inverters. So the EG4 18K PV inverter also has a Wi-Fi dongle, just like the Solark 15K, that you can communicate with it so you can change things, monitor things on your cell phone app or from a desktop computer. So this is considered, this Solark 15K and the 18K PV from EG4 is considered a plug and play, which means you don't have to install transformers, you don't have to put in you don't have to put in charge controllers. It's already included in this thing. The breakers are already included in this thing. The uh, PV disconnects are already included in the Solar 15K and the EG4 18K PV. So it makes the install a breeze for, well, I wouldn't say a breeze, but at least way easier than it otherwise would be if you had to install those separate. Like you see in other people's videos where you see wires and fuses and breakers all over the wall, it looks like a bird's nest. You don't have that with this or the EG4 18K PV. So if you haven't noticed already, this thing is very similar to the Solark 15K. So whether you're going with the Solark 15K or the EG4 18K PV, you're getting a very similar inverter in regards to features and performance. So Solark did point out to me, they said that uh, the EG4 18K PV says it switches from off-grid to on-grid. Basically, if you lost power, how quick will it transfer over to battery power? And they said, I mean, it does say in the manual or in the spec sheet for EG4, it says less than 20 milliseconds. Now, Solark says this happens in five milliseconds. So um, is less than 20, mil 20 milliseconds, five milliseconds? Well, no, it probably looks like EG4 beats them by a little bit on that. The EG4 posts an impressive 97.5% efficiency from the PV array to the grid. So they knocked that out of the park on that. Now the EG4 inverter has a max charge rate to the batteries of 250 amps, which is awesome. Now the Solark 15K beats them by a little bit because they do allow 275 amps, which I mean, I don't know, it's not that big of a difference, but it is something to mention. And the Solark 15K and EG4 18K PV both produce 200 or can use 250 amps from the batteries at a time. So very similar there. They both use 48 volt batteries and they're both battery agnostic, which means you can use any 48 volt batteries you want. Now EG4 uh, does recommend you use their batteries. Of course, they sell great batteries. And actually, I actually use them here, the server rack. So I love their batteries. So they do recommend you use that for closed loop communication, but you can use anybody's 48 volt batteries. And you can also use lead acid ba batteries if you'd like. Now being battery agnostic was a big selling point for me with the Solark and should be for you in my opinion with the EG4 um, because, because you're not tied to anybody's battery. You're not. If something happened to your batteries, you can go with somebody else. Somebody else came out with a better battery, you can use theirs. So that was one of the big reasons I looked at the Tesla Powerwall and decided against it. 
I was going to be stuck with Tesla. And I don't like being married to somebody like that, <laughs> unless it's my wife. And the EG4 18K PV can also handle up to 4 aught wire size, just like the Solark 15K. So <laughs> game changer in the inverter market for that. So the EG4 18K PV and the Solark 15K, they're both beasts. I love them both as of right now. So can I recommend the EG4 18K PV inverter over the Solark 15K? That's a tough one. The Solark 15K has been in the field quite a while, so it's been battle tested and it has succeeded in that test. And I can, I can atone to that too. I've used this thing flawlessly for, gosh, now about almost three months now. So I love this thing. The EG4 18K PV is an impressive inverter though. So the EG4 inverter has not been released into the real world yet. So we're still gonna have to wait and see how it performs when everybody starts using it and making mistakes with it and overloading it. And we'll see how it performs after that. Now, both the EG4 inverter and Solark 15K here, they have a 10 year limited warranty. So looks like it's pretty comparable there. So the question is whether saving $2,500 on the EG4 inverter is worth the risk of not having it battle tested. Because as you can see from the details I've showed you, they're very comparable inverters. Now, but looking at the quality that EG4 has put out, including their EG4 LL version 2 batteries that I have, they obviously focus on quality and that's important to them. So I'm assuming this 18K PV inverter will be the same with them. So saving the $2,500 over the Solark 15K, it may be worth it. That's a question only you can answer though. So make sure you like this video, guys. Subscribe to the channel. It would help me out as this is a new channel.